So it's a great honor to introduce uh, Professor Van Poppel uh, in today's uh, ESO online. He will tackle the issue of screening and early detection of prostate cancer in 2020 in a state-of-the-art lecture. So what's new and what are the challenges? Professor Van Poppel, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Giannarini. It's a, a great honor for me as a very old adjunct secretary general of the EAU to give a state of the art at this uh, ISU online on a topic that is very, very close to my heart. And I'm happy to be adjunct secretary general for education because we need to educate on these early detection programs. And I hope that I can convince uh, all the people listening that this is the way we should go forward. Uh, we all know how frequent prostate cancer is in the European society. Uh, we have now become an EU 27, so the number has slightly decreased uh, after the UK has left. But you see we have still 336,000 uh, uh, men that are diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, and this is the figures of 2020. Now, died of the disease, 107 in the former European Union, including the UK. So it's not an irrelevant disease, it's not an innocent disease, and the cost of uh, prostate cancer in Europe is estimated to be around 10 billion euros. Now, if we go back in history, we should realize that between the 73, 77, 88, and 92, there has been normally one out of two, up to one out of three patients that were diagnosed with prostate cancer died from the disease. So this means that they were simply detected too late. And then obviously we got PSA that was introduced in the mid 80s. And obviously what you see immediately was an increase in incidence. And this is probably a false increase as you can see because after the false increase in incidence, the over-detection of prostate cancer that we have had here by the use of PSA, actually the line has come straight again and is just an uh, increase in prostate cancer incidence overall that continues to go up. The second point to realize is that after this over-detection done here, there has been a decrease in mortality. And I don't say you that this is due to PSA only, it's probably due also to the better treatments that we deliver. What we all know about PSA is that we can use it for early detection. And the population-based screening results in stage migration at diagnosis. So we see them at earlier stages and we decrease prostate cancer death. And if you look at the change in cancer deaths, so this is non-Hodgkin lymphoma, stomach, colon, and rectum. And by the way, bladder is here. We have made very few progress, but if you look what we achieved with prostate, there is actually no other cancer where we did better in improving the mortality rates. And this obviously has to do with the early detection by PSA. If we look at the randomized clinical trials that have been performed, I'm not going to discuss PLCO. We know all the contamination, the dilution, and the underpowered status of this uh, screening trial. But let's look at the good trials, which is ERSPC and the Göteborg, where we see that after 11 years and after 14 years, there is a reduction in death due to prostate cancer of respectively 21 and 44%. So the difference actually between the lower results of ERSPC and the data that we have seen in Göteborg is simply the follow-up. And as an example, this is the Rotterdam cohort. This is the longest follow-up we have available today, 19 years. And you see no contamination in this cohort, like in the American study. And you see that there is a decrease a very important decrease of metastatic disease of 54% and prostate cancer death by 52%. So this means if we are going to screen younger people that have long survival, the impact on prostate cancer death is going to be tremendous. So the problem is that population-based screening has exposed to overdiagnosis 
and to overtreatment. And this is the argument we will always get that we treat too many cancers. And simply, it's well known that incidental prostate cancer occurs is found at autopsy in more than 50% of healthy males. But one should not forget that 11% of all male cancer deaths are prostate cancer related. So it's not an innocent disease. It's not the disease you die with, but the disease indeed you die of. And what we also know is that we can cure early detected disease rather easily today. And the treatment of this early disease gives a better quality of life. Patients will be less incontinent. We will less damage the neurovascular bundles. There will be less impotence. If we give radiotherapy, one could consider not delivering uh, androgen deprivation therapy, maybe give an anti-androgen or no hormonal treatment at all. And if we have more advanced disease, we obviously have more side effects and more incontinence, more need of hormones, and it is often not curable. And then the financial issue, we should not forget that treatment of metastatic disease is extremely expensive. And look at the classical story of a too late detected prostate cancer patient over 18 years. Don't speak about five and 10 years survival when we talk prostate. Prostate kills slowly, the total cost being 300,000 euros. Surgery and radiotherapy are relatively inexpensive. But you see that with the drugs that we have, some of them discussed earlier, with palliative radiotherapy, with the radioligands that are coming up, you see that we can now prolong the life of these patients with two to four years, but at an expense of 240,000 euros. So the cost of too late detected prostate cancer is enormous. Still, PSA testing has been discouraged very widely. There is indeed some kind of anti-PSA propaganda that has come after the increase of the uh, figures of incidence of prostate cancer. And why is that? It's said not to be a killing disease, and I mentioned that earlier. We obviously realize that treatment can lead to unpleasant side effects. And if not detected, you might never experience any complaints. So why would you have early detection? And then most importantly, once we had prostate cancer diagnosed, this automatically led to active treatment. I, for sure, from the 3,000 patients that I've been doing radical prostatectomies on, there must be some 10% maybe, certainly in my initial experience, that did not deserve radical prostatectomy at that moment. Part of them would go after active surveillance to treatment anyhow, maybe 30%, but 70% of those should probably never have had aggressive treatment. Now, the consequence of this is what has happened with this less testing. PSA, anti-PSA propaganda has made that today, and this is UK figures, and this is 2015, so a couple of years ago already, we see that the incidence of prostate cancer and of death by prostate cancer is higher. This means more men die from prostate than women from breast cancer. This is colorectal in Germany. There is more males dying from prostate than from colorectal cancer. So same mortality but no early detection program for prostate. Prostate in Germany and in other countries has become number two when it comes to mortality. So more important than colorectal and all the others. 2016, you see that the number of prostate cancers diagnosed is decreasing. But if you look at the number of metastatic cases diagnosed, they are absolutely increasing. And we have all seen this, and it's known. 72% are diagnosed in an advanced stage, and we did not do anything. And this graph is very well known by everybody. This is the, incident, the mortality of prostate cancer that has peaked around 1990 and then has decreased. This is the fantastic decrease that we have achieved, but this decrease has come to a stop, and there is a rise in prostate cancer mortality. This all 2016 
because of less PSA testing. But let's look what happens more recently. We did not undertake anything. And today in the UK, prostate cancer that has increased by 17% in 10 years. And these are references, as you can see, from 2020. This is recent data. Germany, the three diagnosis in 29% in 2008. Now 50% are diagnosed in an advanced stage. In the US, more patients are primarily diagnosed in a metastatic incurable stage. So we have a reverse migration now with increase of prostate cancer deaths. And this is not historical data, this is recent data. And this runs from the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, very recent by Jamal. And you see that prostate cancer incidence five years after the recommendations of the United States Preventive Task Force. Against screening, you see a net increase in regionally uh, extended disease and in distant disease. And obviously, this will translate in mortality rates in the years to come. Not in five years, maybe, but in 10 years, we will see that mortality continues to increase. And then again, the financial issue. What is the cost of a PSA test? It's 10 euros. A multi-parametric MRI, maybe the biparametric, less expensive, less time consuming, is maybe as good. It's not so expensive. Treatment of early disease is not expensive. So we save by doing today less biopsies because we will also have less complications, less overdiagnosis, and we avoid overtreatment. We do not need to treat castrate refractory disease at this high price any longer. We will have less prostate cancer death with increased professional lifespan, and we will have, and the patients will put the accent on it better quality of life because once you have advanced or metastatic disease you get ADT and all these subsequent uh, treatments you have a very poor quality of life and this is one of the most remarkable papers presented at our virtual EAU20 by André Deschamps the chairman of Europa Womb. Uh, Self-reported quality of life is best in patients where PCA is discovered in an early curable stage. So we need to undertake efforts toward early detection and awareness in order to avoid unnecessary deterioration of the quality of life. And the second point, and I come back to that later, quality of life is negatively impacted by radiotherapy, by a radical prostatectomy, and active surveillance should be promoted since quality of life is less affected in this group. But indeed, the times have changed. We today can avoid overdiagnosis by better use of PSA. There's age-related PSA, there's PSA density. And there's obviously need a volume of the prostate measurement, probably simply by ultrasound. We have risk calculators. Looking at these data, look at the ethnicity, looking at the family history, eventually looking at uh, BRCA2, mutations. We have risk calculators that will say the chance, the likelihood that you ever develop significant cancer is 1% or it's 35%. So we should go ahead. And going ahead at that time will not mean you have prostate biopsies in the random fashion as we did before. No, we have multi-parametric MRI before the biopsy. So we decrease the number of biopsies. We will detect more significant and less insignificant cancers. And this is, again, pretty recent data that have confirmed this. And finally, we reduce overtreatment by the application of active surveillance that is taking off everywhere in 65% of low and some intermediate risk patients. And again, at EAU Virtual 20, we have seen this nomogram that was presented by Mieke van Hemelrijk where we feel more safe by doing active surveillance, looking at a global nomogram, where we can say the likelihood that you will deserve active treatment in the future will be higher or will be lower or will be so low that we certainly can live at ease without any worry. So how can we eliminate the second major male cancer killer in Europe? 
And you know that Ursula von der Leyen in the European Parliament has developed the plan to beat cancer. Kiriakides, the commissioner responsible for EU health, has said that we needed to give input on how we believe that they can beat cancer. How can they try to beat cancer in Europe if they forget to do something about the most common male cancer, which is prostate? And we have come up with this. We do not advocate to have a population-based screening of all men being 45 or 50 years of age and that are not informed. We talk about risk stratified early detection in informed men. And I'm not going to go into detail of these graphs. They are available if you are lower than 60 and you have a PSA below one. And this is 50% of our male population you do not need a PSA next year or in two years. You will have one in five years. But if you are 60 to 70 years, or you are below 60 and you have a PSA higher than three, and in this patient category, this will be 10%, we go for reflex testing. So again, family history, risk calculators, BRCA2, uh, uh, ethnicity, race, etc., will give us the possibility to see whether you need to go ahead. And what is going ahead in these patients? The reflex testing will show that your patient is low risk. We do not do an MRI in these patients. This is 35%. High and intermediate risk indeed will be 65. And these all get a multi-parametric and probably a biparametric MRI in the future. Pirates 1 and 2, low risk clinical follow up. Pirates 4 to 5, this is 40% of this group of patients. They will be high and intermediate risk. And they will go for target and systematic biopsy. And part of them will have no cancer. But in the end, 35% of these 100% will have prostate cancer. But again, in this group, 25% will be grade group one, where we can safely do active surveillance. 75% will have active treatment, radiotherapy, maybe radical prostatectomy, that can be done safely without persisting major side effects these days. And we were happy to see that Ursula von der Leyen, and I attended this meeting because she was, as you can see, pretty close to the the desk where I was seated, and she was telling that she wants to have our uh, advisor. She's doing a public consultation to see whether we should extend screening to other cancer types, and not only to breast, cervical, and colorectal. That has been recommended by the European Commission in 2003, and this has never been revised. So we have incited everybody to do this consultation so that we try to include it, uh, early diagnosis of prostate cancer in the cancer plan. So our recommendations have been written down in a white paper of the EAU to the European Union cancer plan to tackle prostate cancer. The first one is use PSA testing properly. Well-informed man, no non-informed population-based screen well-informed man, 45 to 50, with a life expectancy of 10 years. No limit at 70. Patients today, 75, will live 10 years and are still candidates to continue to do testing. Use risk calculators, PSA density and MRI. And there are a couple of biomarkers around the corner that are not commonly used or available today, but that will add to use PSA in a proper way. And then biopsy dose, at risk for significant cancer. Only treat actively those at risk to die from prostate cancer. And we can certainly recognize them today and manage reductive surveillance, those with low and some with it intermediate risk. And this way, we will not only decrease the cost for prostate cancer in the union, we will decrease the mortality substantially and most important for patients, improve the quality of life. So if I may conclude, uh, Giannini, early detection saves lives. Prostate cancer deaths 
can be dramatically reduced and it is not that difficult and that expensive. Our adult male population and the GPs need to be informed. And we have an EAU patient information leaflet to help them. If you do not want to die from prostate cancer, you're 45 or 50. Today you can achieve that, but you will need the follow to follow the algorithms that we have designed. So no uninformed mass screening, but a well-informed healthy man today should be offered early detection. And he can still decline it. We know that also breast and colorectal and cervix is not uh, uh, really having the vast majority in all countries that uh, apply these, uh, treat these uh, screening tools. Cleverly used medical tools and technologies today avoid overdiagnosis. And finally, active surveillance will avoid overtreatment. And I hope that in the Europe's beating cancer plan, we can have this incorporated. And I hope to have your support. Finally, the European Union and the Commission can say what they want. Health is an issue of the member states. And I want all urologists to lobby in their countries to get this done. And then I will finally be happy that the fight for PSA early detection will finally come true. Thank you for your attention. So thank you very much, Professor Van Poppel, for this outstanding state-of-the-art lecture. Uh, you've been very, very convincing. And I think the three points, major point that we learn uh, are that uh, early detection of prostate cancer does save lives. Then there are multiple ways to reduce over-detection. So it's one of the topic of the anti-PSA propaganda with risk stratification and MRI and so forth. And also there are multiple ways to reduce over-treatment with the uh, active surveillance if uh, correctly applied. Uh, I think we, we should also upload the our work down by the EAU in, uh, by you, by yourself, at the level of the EU Parliament to recognize the utility of uh, early detection for prostate cancer. So thank you again uh, for being uh, us, uh, with us today and for giving these, uh, your thoughts on the topic of early detection. Thank you so much.